In this lesson, we'll take a look at an example of using mathematical modeling to model some fairly real-world data. And the data we're given here is the population over time from 1980 to 2005 of the city of Mathville. And so here's the population for each of those days. We're asked to illustrate the graph the data graphically. And so I'm going to use a graphing calculator. So I'm going to start and stop the PowerPoint a few times to uh, show you uh, what all this looks like in the graphing calculator. So in your graphing calculator, we will go into Stat and Edit. Edit when you're typing in the data. And I've actually typed most of it in. I, um, in the left-hand column is the time, the year. Now notice I didn't type in 1980, 1985, etc. So I type 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So the left-hand column in my data chart is the number of years after 1980. So I do need to type in the last one, which would be year 25. That's 2005 is 25 years after 1980. And the population for that, which is 17,750. So I have my data in the calculator. Now I want to graph the data. And so I need to turn a stat plot on. Notice it says stat plot up here. So I hit second, the y equals. And that plot is on. Now if it was off, I would actually just go into it and make sure I highlight the on. And I'm going to draw a scatter plot, but you have several different um, uh, types of graphs you could draw. Make sure that uh, you tell it to pick up the lists that you type them in. If, for example, if you type them in the numbers, the time and population, the list 2 and 3, make sure it says list 2 and 3. Mine were list 1 and 2. Now, if I just press graph, the window may not, the window may not be set so that I can actually see those six data points from here. So if you go into Zoom and scroll down, as long as you have that stat plot on, Zoom stat automatically fits the window so that you can see all of the data. Okay? So if I click on Enter here, uh, there's the six data points. And so that's what the graph looks like. So that's what my data looks like in the graphing calculator. And that's the graph that I just drew. Now, we're asked to fit the data with a few different re regression models, which means to fit a line or curve or find an equation or line or curve that uh, traces close to or through all of those points. And so, uh, and then it says recommend uh, one of them. So this could, for example, we might try a quadratic um, model. We might try to find a quadratic equation that fits this data. Perhaps there's a uh, a minimum point over here and it curves up like this. So we could try a quadratic and this is what we would type in the on the home screen of the calculator and you go into um, actually I guess I should show that. If you go into stat and it's under calculate not under edit so we go over to calculate and there's a whole bunch of different regression models. The one I'm using right now is the quadratic regression right there. Now, so you type in, now it actually defaults to list 1 and list 2. But if you type in list 1, comma, list 2, and I typed in comma also y1, and then it'll actually graph, when I look at my graph, the, uh, the line here or the curve that we're going to graph. Now, if you enter in your calculator, this is what the calculator will come up and tell you. Uh, it'll tell you the quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and tell you what all the coefficients of x squared uh, x and c are. And so it's so a is 1.6, that would be 1.6 x squared. And actually it looks like this. The, um, the amount or population over time would be 1.6 times the time squared. The b number is 175.6, so it rounds to 176. I round to the nearest integer. And then the constant in the end is 12,354.28. So to the nearest whole number it's 12,354. If on your calculator you don't see the R squared value, you need to turn the diagnostic on. And that, the closer that value is to either 1 or negative 1, the better the fit is. And now that actually isn't always the case. There are ways, there are situations where it might actually be close to 1 but really not be a great fit for the data. But that's a general rule that the closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the better a fit it is for the data. Now if you actually graph that it looks like this so it looks like that there's a pretty good fit for um, between this equation and the actual data we have here now the only problem with using a quadratic model is if I um, increase the time interval for example if I go for a longer period of time uh, not just 0 to 25 years 
And so there's the same data points I had a moment ago. But if I go back in time, let's say back to around the year 1900. And so uh, if this is 1980, then 80 years before it would be around 1900. And so it, the model tells me that my population was probably around 8,514. But going that, that back that far in time, we wouldn't necessarily, I guess we could have a quadratic model fitting this, but we wouldn't necessarily have one. Uh, it would probably, in a lot of circumstances, it would probably be that the population was just growing over time. So the quadratic model, even though over the short term it might go through all the points and be a good fit, it might not be over a longer time interval. So hence, we're going to try a, an exponential model instead. So if you go back into your graph and calculator and uh, use the exponential regression, again, list 1, list 2, and I'll put it in Y1, and this is what uh, you get in your graph and calculator screen. So it's uh, y equals a times b to the power of x. Uh, that's the a value. Um, the base of the power is 1.0146, etc. And again, r squared is actually quite close to 1. You'll see, you'll see in the graph that the, and actually it looks very similar to the quadratic, but it doesn't over a longer period of time. Now, over a longer period of time, this is what my exponential model looks like, and it's a little more likely, or actually a fair bit more likely, that that, that population right there in 1900 was probably closer to being correct. It probably didn't come down to some value and then start increasing. So this is probably a better model. Now, so this is what the uh, graphing calculators tell me that my uh, population model or equation should be. Uh, 12,348.6 rounds to 12,349 times, and the B1.01, this would round to 5 to 3 decimal places, to the power of time. Now, alternatively, another exponential model we could use, and this is similar to half-life, would be the 12,349, the original population, times 2 to the power of the time over the doubling period. Remember, half-life, that was the half-life. And so this is actually going to give us a very similar type equation to this one here. And what I'm going to do then, there's my equation, I'm going to pick a, a data point from the chart, and it doesn't, uh, there's no particular reason why I picked this one, but I, I, I just chose that one. And I'm going to substitute in, this is my population for a time, and of course the time would be 20 years, so we'll put 20 in place of time. And we'll solve for D. So the first thing I would do is divide out the 12,349, and 16,500 divided by 12,349 is 1.3361. And then I'll uh, use logarithms to solve for D. So the exponent, 20 over D, would equal the logarithm of this, base 2. And so rearranging and solving for D, and of course, if you want, you could think of this as over 1. So when I go to cross multiply, uh, 1 times that 20, of course, is 20. And then we'd be dividing that by the log of uh, 1.3361 base 2. And so that's what d equals. So uh, if I evaluate that in my calculator, it tells me my doubling period is pretty close to 48 years. So then a slightly different model, still exponential, would be uh, the amount or the population after time t is 12,349 times 2 to the power of, and so notice what I did was I put uh, the 48 in place of uh, d here. Now, if I graph this and compare it to the, uh, the model we had above here, it looks very similar. In fact, if I graph it over time, it still looks pretty similar. Slightly different population, but we're talking about uh, thousands of people in this town, so a difference of a little over 100, 130-ish, it really isn't that big back to the year 1900. So it's still a pretty good model. So you could use either of these. Uh, they would Either of these would be fine, this model, or the, uh, the one with the doubling period, and, and both of them would be pretty good representations of uh, an equation that fits that data over time. And that's the end of the lesson.